Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 and we're starting off easing into things with a photo opportunity. The photo challenge for this season requires you to have either an Alpine or a Renault outside this mural. To find it nice and easily you come to where the seasonal championship, the Panoramica Sprint starting point is and just drive down the road and it'll be right there on the side. And the reason we chose this Alpine in particular is because this event lab race requires a retro rally car. Now the strange thing is, is it requires a rally category car, however this is in no way a rally track. Uh, this event lab is built over the ruins as some sort of like restoration idea with the thought that you would put a racetrack over the roof of your temple complex if you remodeled it. Not a bad idea, to be honest. I think it's uh, an idea that should catch on. Uh, I'm not feeling that much like it's uh, a dirt track. So our off-road tyres and rally suspension are probably a little bit wasted here. But it doesn't seem to be doing us any disservice either. Unfortunately, because I just wanted to do the tie-in with the photo challenge, I'm up against other cars that are probably better suited for this sort of thing than what I am, really. But we're holding our own, currently. It's interesting when you see off to the side of the track, because we're up a much higher elevation than the game expects, so it doesn't load things in properly. You can see just gaps in the mesh in the distance. <laughs> it's just the, the blue nothingness that appears when you're too far away from the render range. Trying to make sure I just dab brakes a little bit, reduce the speed enough that then I can just get a good line into the corner, accelerate through, hopefully without sliding too much, because as soon as all four wheels start sliding, you're in trouble. And then the temptation is just to ease off completely, but being in an all-wheel drive car especially, you do kind of need to put a little bit of power on so that the grip pulls the car back in line. You just need to make sure you're facing the right way when you do that. <laughs> well, nice track. Not entirely sold on the concept, but uh, pretty well executed. Now the next fun little tie-in is that the car that we won from that event lab race was this Mustang Mark 1. And one of the daily challenges is to win a drag race in any Mustang Mark car. There's a drag race on this airstrip sort of thing in amongst the ruins where we just finished. And uh, now we're just winning. Just like that. Easy point. And once again we find ourselves buried in the steps of the Great Pyramid. They really should have aimed the drag race the other direction, so at least you go flying off into the undergrowth. Never mind. Now there is a PR challenge nearby, but for that we need a specific car, and that leads us on to our next championship. So in this championship we are having to use cult cars that are detuned. There's a DeLorean. There's a Anglia, I think. There's a Morgan. A lot of fun ones here, and the VW van as well up ahead. We're in a Renault, interestingly, that we had tuned up. Now there's two different ways you can go with these sorts of cars, because a lot of the time they start as a D100, which is just the bottom rung. And the first thing you may be tempted to do is one of the engine replacements. You can stick a motorbike engine in this vehicle, and it will go very, very fast. Unfortunately, it will not corner. <laughs> and you cannot do an engine upgrade and tyre upgrades. So, as you may have guessed by now, what I've done instead is given it tyre upgrades and transmission and I've done whatever power that I could do to the stock engine in order to just eke whatever I can out of this thing. Now, I would have liked to do full upgrades on this vehicle, which would have included doing the camshaft and that would have given it a bit more high revs it would have pushed our top speed up higher than this 150 that we were doing, 140 uphill. 
but that would have pushed it into the C range, and if I'd fully upgraded it, it would have pushed it all the way into the B category. It was adding that much power, it turns out. So there is more potential in this thing, but <laughs> again, you could only really get away with that if you didn't upgrade the tires, and then you wouldn't be able to put the power on the road. But I prefer all the other upgrades that I've made to the suspension and just the wheels in general. And all in all, it's paid off pretty well because it means that I can take corners like that without even slowing down and preserve what speed that I can get out of this thing onto the home straight. And we've just got one more lap. We're well ahead of the competition. That is the one downside to making all of the sensible handling upgrades to a vehicle like this is that then, honestly, the race does get a little bit straightforward. And... You know, maybe it would be more entertaining to have the madness of the motorbike engine. A little bit of behind the scenes, I had originally done that. This had the motorbike engine in it when I first started racing it. I was sliding around this track like I was on ice skates. Unfortunately, I lost the recording of it, because the game crashed. And as we've had happen before, it then just freezes on a frame. And that one frame was all I had for the entire race. So, I'm afraid you're stuck with this now. <laughs> Maybe we'll revisit that some other day. Possibly with the Morgan, that's more entertaining. On to the next circuit race, and it appears we're up against a Christmas present? That's the BMW, I think. And there's a PLP50 I see further up ahead. Fantastic. <laughs> yep, it's off. <laughs> It'll do really well until it gets to the corner, I suspect. Well, that's a bit of fun. That would also be another fun vehicle to pull out for this, but I haven't done any tuning on mine. I'm not even sure I'm going to catch him. <laughs> but that's fine. If I place second, then we don't have to do too much on the next one. Coming second in the next race should also be sufficient. First, we've got to get past this cardigan. Posing as a VW van. And then I suspect that the Peel has actually got a lower top speed than I do in this. Which is saying something. But I think we're starting to reel it back in now. And here's another Renault, same as same as what I'm in. Doesn't have the flared wheel arches though. Not as stylish. Just goes to show how slow these laps are in a D-class vehicle. <laughs> because normally a lap in this track is less than a minute in most other vehicles. Ooh, we just got shunted because I was braking responsibly for the corner. That says a lot about who I'm racing against. Yeah, this is why I don't race D-class cars very often, because uh, things take a while. Just imagine doing, like, the round the map. Is it Goliath? Titan? Can't remember which one of those that just goes around the entire map. Doing that in a D-Class. That would take a while. <laughs> and there's the peel wielding. It was having to break a little bit too much for these corners, and thanks to our tire upgrades, we didn't. It is, however, now catching us up again. But we can just drive very defensively, and I think we've got a little bit more mass to play with than it does. But once again, fairly predictable results, and across the line. Oh, that's interesting. We have a dust storm. Now, if you encounter this in your game and you don't already have the accolade for it, or the achievement for it, if you fast travel up to the satellite dish up on top of the mountain and then get a picture looking back down this way, there's an achievement for that called Dust in the Lens. It's a very annoying one because dust storms don't happen as often as you think that they should. It's much like thunderstorms in the rainy season or the stormy season. But leaving the dust storm behind, 
we are now going to race through the canyons. This is definitely the track that I intentionally left until last because our top speed might hurt us a bit more here. It's uh, not so much on the tight corners but instead very long straights so we've just got to hope that we're able to beat at least two of our opponents. There is a reliant three-wheeler that I'm eerily confident about beating. I just really want to tip it over, but I suspect it's just going to do that itself at some point anyway. Ooh, it's trying to push me out of the checkpoints. Cheeky. There's another peel. The peel, wisely, has the single wheel at the rear of the vehicle instead of the front. Still hideously unstable, and I don't know why they thought it was a good idea, but uh, moderately better than the Reliant. And now we're just up against what appears to be a dune buggy. Which I would not have expected to have a particularly high top speed either, but uh, seems I underestimated it. Feels like it should have bigger wheels as well. <laughs> we'll just take advantage of the drafting skills for now. trying to corner as well as we can to get ahead but I suspect our only chance really of getting ahead might come on the hairpin Oof. that comes up later as long as we don't run wide on too many other corners but again this is why we left this race until last the fact that we've won the first two means we know that we don't have to win this one Second would be plenty, third would be plenty. In fact, depending on who placed where in the other two games, sometimes even lower than that. Alright, here's maybe our chance up here with the hairpin bend. We could race aggressively and push into him if we needed to. Nope, he's got better cornering than we do. Tires are all well and good, but can't beat the dune buggy, turns out. I do have one of those. I should tune that up. <laughs> Two corners to go. This is where you've just got to hope that the AI maybe makes a bit of a mistake and that you don't. <laughs> you can kind of abuse the rewind feature a little bit in that regard because you can just keep redoing corners in the hope that eventually they will make a mistake. But that's fine. We'll, we'll be happy with second. The important thing is that, that winning that championship has given us the international scout that we need for the PR challenges, but it's by default a D class. A category required for the PR challenge is C class. Quickest thing to do is just going to be to swap out the engine and immediately we're at the 550 range. I think then we're going to do one of our usual things and focus on tyres if we can. Oh no, no we cannot. You can either upgrade the tyres or upgrade the engine. Now since we're doing things like speed traps, we're going to buy us on the engine and then make other tire improvements to hope that we can counteract what's going to be far more power than this vehicle is designed to handle. And to help us harness that power, we should also upgrade the transmission. Seems like nothing is affecting the top speed, which is strange, uh, probably because it's a replaced engine. And acceleration actually says that it drops, even though the shift time is minus 0.2 seconds. I'm guessing we just need to do a bit of tuning. Can also upgrade the brakes so that actually puts us right on the 600 amount but we're not allowed to do any roll cage we won't be able to do any weight reduction and uh we're not going to be able to do any performance changes at all i'm sure oh we can <laughs> have a slightly lighter flywheel i don't think it is worth it but never mind bang on 600 let's tune this up and take it for a spin now the first PR challenge we'll do is we'll head back to the temple complex and go for the speed trap where we need to do at least 160 k's an hour through here. So hopefully across the rough surface we've done enough to the acceleration. Good enough. Next on the list is a danger sign. We'll be jumping into a different temple complex. 
And I'm just going to get as big a run up as I can. We need to jump 200 meters, which sounds like a lot, but thankfully we're doing it off a hillside, so hopefully we shouldn't have too much of an issue. Going 230 k's an hour down the hill. Just enough. And finally, a little bit further into the jungle from that temple complex, we have a speed zone to get through. And honestly, I'm feeling that maybe replacing the engine was a little bit excessive. We only need to get 104 k's an hour on average through here. I think just better tires and suspension probably would have done the trick to make that corner go a lot smoother. But we managed, we did it, and now we've got a pretty well equipped classic rally vehicle if we so wish. And with those out of the way, we are halfway through the season. We've got our VW thing. Maybe that's a cult car that we could have used for those races, I'm not sure. And we need 16 more points to get the Lancia. I think it's time to see if we own this Mercedes-Benz 190E and start the weekly challenge. And we do own the 190E, thankfully. In fact, I have two of them. Uh, it's available from Wheel Spins and the Auto Show, so if you don't have one, don't worry. It is pretty cheap, and I almost won another one on the super wheel spin that I got from doing this PR challenge. So that's a bit of fun. That would have been a fun coincidence. Uh, the next thing I have to actually do with this is to get three stars in speed zone, so I thought I'd just run this back. But being a rear wheel drive car, it didn't handle it very well. Um, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of tuning to make this viable. So given the location and the somewhat tight configuration of the speed zone, the target score for two stars is only 96 k's an hour, and I feel I wasn't too far off that, maybe, question mark. We'll give it another go, and regardless, one star was only about 40. So either way we're getting one star, and ooh, can we get to two stars? Oh, just under. That's rough. Well, the advantage is that, so far as I'm aware, we'll find out after this one, generally when it says earn three stars at speed zones, plural, usually means that you can just accumulate. You don't have to do three stars at any speed zone singular. So this final run should put it to bed without us doing anything else to the car. And we want to do that just in case we then get an objective to spend money on it. And I don't want to do that twice. There we go. Speed with style complete. And the next thing that we need to do with the Mercedes for the weekly challenge is win a road circuit race. And player is all is not far away. Our house was also not far away, so we could do a few tweaks. Once again, couldn't upgrade the tires or much in the way of performance, but we could at least make some handling changes, including ooh, a little bit on the brakes. Um, not enough, unfortunately. However, this is a road race, and uh, one of the things that you can get away with in road races is just kind of ramming into corners and using the wall to help you get around. It's not a strategy I like to do, <laughs> but when you don't have damage turned on, it does work. <laughs> so if we have to, if this thing slides too much, uh, yep, I think, I think we might just be doing that. This thing does not want to take corners. So let's just go full into that one. We rub against the wall, but we don't really shed much speed. And then we just keep on accelerating. So once again, crunch. And we're right behind them because they braked, we didn't. And uh, turns out, that's viable. Now it's not my preferred style of racing, obviously. Uh, if you've been watching this at all, you know that I much prefer to do a clean job of it. So that was a cleaner corner, but they're right behind me again. If I'd just taken that one more aggressively, I probably would have stayed further ahead. you got to remember that at its heart, this is an arcade racing game, not a simulation game. <laughs> But well, that's because, again, I have the damage turned off. You can turn that on for a more realistic experience. 
I prefer not to because cross country exists and the things that your car does in a cross country race it just doesn't seem worth it <laughs> and crunch and accelerate this is now bumper cars now I should stress this is not a bad car I've just not made quite enough changes to it ideally I would have pushed this even higher into different categories I kept it in the C range I believe which uh, you know isn't really doing it justice but I also wasn't too keen on spending too much money just for the sake of a challenge crunch okay so it wasn't better but it probably wasn't worse <laughs> The sharper the corner, the less viable that strategy is, obviously, because the angle of the barrier is what helps you around. And if you're just hitting into a essentially right angle, it's not going to work so well. Doesn't stop a lot of people trying it in the trial, though. See, it just does not want to turn on that corner in particular. I was going fully on the stick there. This one, fine, but I think it's just because once it gets up to a certain speed, the downforce kicks in from the giant rear wing that you can't uh, replace with one of the adjustable ones. You can get rid of it entirely, and maybe that's what I should have done. Okay, we'll do this one properly. There we go. Much better. It makes me feel better. You know, they're catching up, but we're too close to the finish. And we're back in photo mode again because apparently the final thing that we have to do for the weekly challenge is just take a picture of the car. Alright. But we specifically did have to do it at the coffee shop area at the end of the motorway. And it's kind of fortuitous in some ways because then we just want to also honk our horn five times. And not only is the weekly challenge now complete, but also stirring up trouble. Beep your horn five times at the cars and coffee shop at the western end of the highway. Combo value. And with that complete, we now have our full series progress completed. We've got the Ford Mustang Double D. But we're still 11 points shy of our Lancia 037. And unfortunately, it's a little bit of a messy sort of completion now. We've got another event lab. We'll be racing a track toy. We've got another seasonal championship for a modern sports car and a treasure hunt. Rio Fuerte in a De Beatty vehicle. Now, conveniently, the Mustang that we just won from the series progress is actually a De Beatty Mustang, not just any old Ford. So we've taken it to Rio Fuerte. It's not a landmark shown on the map, but it is the name of this speed zone, and it does mention getting two stars. To do that, we need to get about 180 k's an hour average, I believe. So this is the tricky part through this corner section, but once we get through here, we can pile on the power again a little bit, break a little bit of this corner. We just don't want to fail. And not quite get across the line fast enough. Oh, we did. Okay, 170 must have been the goal, not 180. And it turns out that the treasure is revealed to be further down the canyon. So for a change, we're just going to drive there instead of taking the fast travel route. We don't drive our cars between places nearly often enough in this game anymore. <laughs> now that fast travel is free and unlimited to wherever we want to go, it's far too easy to just ignore the fact that it is actually a driving game, not just a racing game. And time to hop outside of the car to, one, admire it, and two, because now we're going to get a better chance to look for the treasure chest. Where would the treasure chest be, do you think? On the railway bridge, perhaps? Or under the railway bridge, perhaps? Sure enough, it just popped up on our minimap. <laughs> just from driving over the railway bridge. There it is. Crunch. 100,000 credits. And to embrace the chaos even further, we are doing the other event lab race now. 
its track toys around supposedly a circuit. <laughs> it's the lighthouse circuit apparently. Not sure if based on a real place or not. I am hoping that the surface is not so slippery as that was for us last time. Nope, seems not. The car is actually turning, that's a good start. It's got all sorts of other weird offshoots. I just thought that I was going to be going straight ahead back there, but nope. It's a pretty short track, but we're doing four laps of it, so... Let's see if we can get ahead. And then stay ahead. And hopefully each lap is a quick one. Looks like it should be sub-minute if we get the corners down better. Oh, now they've got the distance markers. <laughs> they don't have them on any other corner, but they do there. Alright. No crowd either. And it looks like you should be able to go straight ahead there, but you can't. Instead, we go through this tricky chicane. Our M3 has been tuned up quite some time ago for very much situations like this. I guess that's the lighthouse that the track takes its name from. Presumably it doesn't look much like a lighthouse to me, but never mind. I'm not sure where this is meant to be either. I mean, it's not a bad track at least. I do kind of enjoy it. It'd be nice if they were a bit more consistent with their design and maybe had some more of the distance markers, which honestly don't look correct, unless they're meant to be speed indicators for your braking, but I feel that this corner is where you want that, because uh, it's a very sharp hairpin straight after the start line. It's a weird choice, to say the least. And otherwise they've just done the classic trick of throwing some empty grandstands and chuck some tall buildings in the distance. <laughs> that counts as ambiance apparently. But they have done a pretty good job of setting up like the pit area. On to the final lap and I suspect that the AI is not coping with these corners very well. I think it might be being a bit confused, much like I was on the first lap. There's these other giant grandstands and other bits of road off in the distance that feels like this is a segment of a much larger racetrack. I wonder if they've created a larger area and then they just use that as a template for different things. But I'm not sure what you can import. I thought that it was the track, like the driving area was what you inherited when you did that. Not sure. Either way, uh, there's a bit of a pile up at the start finish line looks like uh yeah there's a lot of very confused people here oh dear <laughs> and on to the final championship where we'll be taking our surfing pikachu s2000 for a spin once again we used in a previous episode and we've got a sprint race through the city and then a couple more up in the hills look like. So hopefully we should be over and done this in fairly short order. Got this nice long straight all the way up out of town and then the sharp end <laughs> in order to peel off and go around the top end. Really wish that would get out of my way eh? <laughs> ah, lost our combo. <laughs> I was hoping I'd be able to pick up the draft again after the corner. Never mind. Needed to slide a little bit more in the corner probably. Crunch crunch. I'm just gonna push them out wide. I'm not interested in racing nicely. We're out here to win. <laughs> Oof, bit of sun strike there. Not what you want just before a corner. Yeah, racing up here at this time of day is just downright dangerous. <laughs> Around the corner section before we go back into the city and through the other side, wrapping around the start of the track. It's an interesting layout, this one. Kind of enjoy it. Much prefer this one to the tunnel run that has you going through the catacombs that are honestly really annoying to drive through. 
and the map is just very confusing. Break for the correct corner, not the first one. Take out the phone booth, because why not? <laughs> they honestly look more like parking ticket machines. Well, sure hasn't been clean, but we got there in the end. Well, apparently it was ultimate clean, so who am I to judge? And on to the next race, which is a quick circuit around the top of the hill. We'll see if we can avoid Sunstrike this time. <laughs> Apparently going away from the sun, that's a good start. We're a little bit slidey. This is only a rear wheel drive car. And being B rating, we probably don't have the greatest of tyres. That windshield reflection is getting really annoying. Let's just do bonnet view. <laughs> in Horizon 4 you had the option to disable the windshield reflection. Now you don't have the same option in this it seems. You're stuck with it. Like, I get the realism factor, but oh, it's so annoying. Whoop, and now we get to see the brick wall up close as we go through it. Lap number two, and we're not in front, which concerns me. We need to race a little bit more cleanly this time round. We did have an encounter with a brick wall that we hope to not repeat. It also just slides a little bit more on these corners that we would like. You are really just playing follow the leader at this point, they're not giving us any massive opening to get ahead like they sometimes do. Maybe through here? Yeah, we missed the wall this time, which is a good start. But then we've got this corner, which is quite tricky. And yeah, we've caught up a little bit, but not enough. We need to at least get third in this, ideally, to make the next race a must-win to take the championship. Whoever's in front is definitely doing very well. And unfortunately, this is a very short race. We don't have much room for mistakes. These two have the same paint job, I think. Not quite. We might just have to do the good old-fashioned ram into the wall technique for going around corners quickly. But we are at least in third, which is kind of what we aim for when things are getting a bit tough. Oh, never mind, we're in second. That's even better. <laughs> oh, and they went slowly through there. That was a bit of an opportunity if we'd done better on the previous lap. But as it is, we'll just have to settle for second behind the 370Z. That's fine. But that does make this final race something of a must win, or at least must come second to probably someone else that was not that person that won that race. <laughs> Either way, we'll be aiming for first regardless. Hopefully as long as everyone gets out of our way and doesn't block us through all of these corners. We do at least have good brakes. We go charging down the hillside. The sun has set a little bit more now, it seems. A little bit shaky through there. Yes, yeah, so it's the Nissan in first again. It's a different colour, oddly, but I assume that it's still the same driver. So we sneak through, and now we've just got to kind of hold it together. We shouldn't have to brake for any of these bends going down the hill. Which I think that they sometimes do. But so long as you turn well enough in advance, you don't have to. What you do have to do is brake really hard for the corner that's coming up just here. In fact, we probably overbroke it. In fact, we probably overdid it there. And now having gone down the hill, we go back up again, or at least part way. And have another really long straight with another really sharp corner at the end of it. The car honestly felt like it was starting to just slide uncontrollably there, so I brake very early. 
but we still got to head through the roundabout going the wrong way. That's how I do them in Truck Simulator all the time. Take the third exit. Oh, you mean first left. And another long straight section that we just hope to keep control of the vehicle. I think the aerodynamics on this one are very lacking in downforce. It's a very slippery vehicle. Both in tyres and bodywork. And now the sharp corner up here leading on to the final straight up to the finish. The AI never navigates very well, so we're going to take it nice and easily to set ourselves up for an easy victory. Job done, and that should be the season. And sure enough, there's the 40 points we need for the Lancia 037. And that's also it for the Cars and Coffee series. Next is the High Performance Dailies, 15th August 2024. I don't know what that means, but there are new race routes being added, which is kind of cool, and a bunch of new cars. So we'll find out more about that in a few days' time. For now, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you then.